and the Portuguese people and all the other people around the Mediterranean area are very, very inspiring. It's a nice country, it's, uh, it's beautiful work and uh, yeah, it gives them a lot of freedom. Her mother is already engaged in a seed company. Or uh, my plastics? No, we 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 try to. We're going to try to do a lot of mulching with uh, with the straw mainly. Because you can actually have very short growing season, very fresh ones with lots of rain. Lots of rain. Freya Serpent from Pibble and I would like to ask you Freya why Live Seed Project is important in promoting organic plant breeding? Well Live Seed Project is important because uh, we are looking for adapted varieties in, our, in organic agriculture and uh, first you want to have organic seed and then we want to have organic varieties in uh, Live Seed or in, in organic agriculture. This is the first time that there is a European project that um, there's an exchange between the countries, how these different countries deal with the organic regulation on seed and how to promote organic breeding. Okay, and why this um, workshop you think is, is interesting and what you will take home? I think the workshop is interesting because uh, Portugal is, um, is not so uh, active at the moment. Well, there's, it is active, but we don't know so much uh, what is going on. And there are not so many organic breeding companies and uh, organic seed companies active. But there is an initiative growing very fast. And therefore, this is like an incubation uh, phase where it is possible to also to convince other people to get involved in the subject. Thank you. We are here with Edith Lammert van Buren from Wageningen University, Louisburg Institute. She has been working 40 years on organic plant breeding and organic agriculture. And I would like to ask you, Edith, what is the challenges in the future of organic plant breeding? Well, I see at the moment that we are very much engaged to improve certain traits to adapt to organic farming systems. But I also want to look ahead and see that we not only contribute with organic plant breeding to ecological resilience, but we should also take up the responsibility of um, supporting societal resilience and also address issues um, that are also taken up in the sustainable development goals like um, food security and um, food safety um, and food quality specifically, um, food sovereignty but also seed sovereignty and issues like social justice. Um, but also in ecological resilience there are aspects that can be improved because we tend to look at the short term but we also need to look and find business models to stimulate ecosystem services in varieties and that is an area that has not really been addressed yet um, by plant breeders. So I think both societal and ecological resilience are the, the future challenge for us. 
And what do you believe this uh, workshop today it was important and what you will take home? I, what I take home is um, the incredible diversity of, um, of um, regions, um, climatical regions, um, cultural diversity, and um, it's clear there is not one blueprint for um, our global, um, international and national problems. We need a huge amount of creativity and, um, and diversity in uh, reading initiatives. Thank you. We are here with Maria Carascosa from Spain, Red de Semillas, and she will let us know what are the developments in organic plant breeding in Spain and what is the use of organic seed in organic farming. So uh, there are some experiences on organic plant breeding, but for us the most important type of breeding uh, is the participatory plant breeding. So unfortunately there are not so many projects on that, there are some of them that just collaborate with some farmers but not with a participatory methodology from the beginning of the project. In other countries there are a lot of experiences like in Italy and in France and we hope that in the following years we, would, we will develop a good relationship and a participatory relationship with researchers to work on organic plant breeding. So, the use of organic seeds in Spain is low, although we have 2 million of hectares in organic agriculture. Uh, the database that we have is not really updated, so there is a big uh, work to do at the governmental level, so we need more commitment from the government uh, to develop, to really develop this, this sector and to help in the development of this sector. And we need also to include in, this, uh, in the organic agriculture the informal sector that is quite big in Spain and that is having a very big role of increasing biodiversity in organic farms. And what is the message you take home after this workshop today? Hmm. So I think that for me a main idea is that uh, when we think in the development of organic plant breeding and organic agriculture, we need to think in coherent actions that goes from the seed to the fork, so that we have to activate different, uh, let's say, uh, pillars of the organic agriculture. So it has no sense to move seeds if we don't move consumption of markets. So this is one idea and the other idea is that uh, we, we need to think in food sovereignty and in, in seed sovereignty. So we need to focus our work in uh, local production, local consumption, local markets, local varieties and there we can build a new relationship, rural development, which uh, will uh, play a very important role in the present of the world. Thank you, Marie. Here with Hans Kolling from the Met of Germany. And please tell us, why is organic plant breeding important for the Met? We need organic plant breeding because we need great plant varieties to have good quality food, organic food, biodynamic food, and also for uh, sustainability reasons. We need, to, um, we need to preserve biodiversity and we need to have plant varieties that can cope with uh, changing climate conditions. And we already have some great organic varieties on the market and some great initiatives who are working on it. But it's still a very small sector, so now we need to bring it to the next level. We really need to um, mainstream organic plant breeding, organic varieties, and therefore we need to involve the whole food chain. And we need to convince the consumers that organic varieties offer uh, something additional, really uh, an additional quality. And therefore we have to work on communication strategies now and also maybe on a common label so that it is clear 
this variety it comes from organic plant breeding, is special and has a special taste. Why do you believe this workshop was interesting and what is the message you would take home? This workshop was really interesting for us um, and I think it's always really helpful to have different people from different countries exchanging about their experiences with organic plant breeding in this case but also with how to bring these organic varieties to the markets and what I will bring home is um, yeah it is clearly a common task now to develop um, also in this European network uh, strategies to get closer relationships within the food chain from the breeder over the farmer, processor, retailer to the consumer. Thank you. Klaus Rapp from Arkino will uh, inform us about the work of Arkino and how they promote organic plant breeding via their work in Austria. Okay, well, the, let's start with the, with the landscape of organic plant breeding in, in Austria. The, the organic sector is quite um, well developed and there are also, quite from the beginning, um, plant breeding initiatives. Small ones by individuals um, who began breeding with spelt or with um, special rye varieties and, uh, or with um, poppy seed. And these initiatives still exist. Um, some of them already have been transferred to the next generation doing breeding work but on a small scale because of the still um, prohibiting legal environment. In addition, when organic farming became more prevalent in Austria, the, the bigger seed uh, companies began investing into organic plant breeding. So the, the major cereal breeding institution in Austria called Saat Zucht Donau, which is a joint venture of two uh, major seed multipliers and seed traders. They run a quite successful hybrid breeding program. So they are breeding uh, for both conventional and organic, but they are doing the selection under organic conditions even the selection for conventional. So that's a quite interesting model and they're doing a hybrid breeding program because of cost pressure. They cannot afford two separate breeding programs. Okay. And um, Akinoa is, is uh, primarily um, a seed savers association tasked with uh, the conservation of old and traditional varieties of uh, vegetables, herbs, cereals, fruit trees and, and some other crops. And about 10 years ago, we started also with um, projects of maintenance breeding. So to ensure that, um, that the quality of the old varieties can be better adapted to, to modern environmental stress factors, but also to, to market and consumer needs. And um, a few years ago, we also started initiatives where together with farmers in a participatory setting, uh, also um, development of new cultivars based on old cultivars takes place. So for example, there's a tomato breeding project going on where the, the goal is to incorporate uh, resistance uh, against specific diseases, which is not traditionally in the old varieties, into these varieties so that they can be grown uh, more successfully under um, moist conditions in the, in the western parts of the country. And there are some other smaller projects going on with different crops, uh, also with very um, rare crops, um, like I don't even know the English name of <laughs> but um, some vegetables which are, which are orphans um, on the market and, and uh, for most of farmers as well. And in addition to that, we try to, to influence uh, policy making to create a more favorable environment to the exchange of plant genetic resources, but also to the sales of seeds and, and of products of breeding activities. And we don't care about if the result of a breeding activity is 
the US according to the Eupel scheme or if it is just relevant for the farmers. This is what we care about most and we try to, to provide or to enlarge the space available for farmer breeders or for small breeding associations that want to innovate. We are here with the CEO for Living Seeds, Stefan Dobling, which started this young seed company in 2015. What inspired you to start this initiative, this seed company, in Portugal? Uh, where a lot of synergy is uh, established or can be established and there is no organic seed production in a professional way. What message would you like to give to other people in the Mediterranean countries who would like to start with organic plant breeding or start uh, with uh, organic seed multiplication? Act and think and do it. <laughs>